All right, stream is in fact connected to everybody. Welcome YouTube, welcome Twitch, welcome Steam on the homepage, the Everspace, Everspace 2 homepage. That's right, we always stream over there. I know, I know it doesn't seem like we do. Maybe YouTube and Twitch think that you guys are the only ones, but no, we also stream over to the Steam homepage. So uh, yeah, welcome, welcome. We'll be getting started here in just a few minutes. I am so sorry for our European fellows and the time change difference. It's, it's silly. It's going to affect us this week. Um, next week, we're actually, uh, we'll have, I have information about next week. Uh, not going to be surprising at all. And then we'll be back up the week after that, which will be one week before full release. Oh my God. Nuts. Right. I'm so sorry. That's so close to the mic. I even planned on never doing that again, and here I am, slapping my hands. Rip headphone users, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the official Rockfish Games stream. I am your host and your guide, Eric Schrader, the community ambassador for Rockfish Games, the creators of Everspace and Everspace 2. I will be guiding you through yet another game dev community stream that we answer your questions live and service you uh, per usual. We are 20 days out from full release. Whew, my goodness. 20 days out from the full release. That is, it's like incredibly exciting and terrifying from our perspective right now. There's still a lot of stuff that we've got to get done, but we have been making some pretty brilliant progress. So you may see some of those tweaks and nuances here and there as I'm going through this game. If I catch them, I'll point them out to you. Uh, but otherwise, we are picking right up where we left off from Geek Bite from last week. Granted, I do think that I completed that uh, side mission chain that he was trying to get through. Uh, but then we are heading back over to Prescott, continuing Maddox's mission. Uh, other things that we are going to be talking about this stream, just wanted to cover some, uh, actually, let's start with it. Let's start with it. We'll also finish with it. That way everybody knows. We will be at GDC and PAX East very soon, like right around the corner, literally, okay? So um, GDC, it's gonna have a small pocket of individuals. PAX East got a small pocket of individuals. We got two teams going. If you are over at PAX East, our booth number is 12052, I think, is that right? I completely said that off memory, by the way. I have to check, I have to check. Um, here, I know, I know a way we can check. Hang on a second, let's watch this. Dex, that body we just found, when I saw it, it felt like that was still me in there. Your DNA scans show that you're a military clone pilot. No wonder you bettered my predecessor. What if I broadcast your profile? You mean on 
Mike will come looking for me. Hundreds of loose cannons like you roaming the region and causing problems. Something had to be done about it. There's something of great value in the DMZ. One big, easy job. You be my ticket out of here, and yours too. Your authority, your treaties, your lies, and your filthy presence have no place here. They call themselves Okar Prime. Any opportunity to trigger a new war will suit their purposes perfectly. It is time to be clear about your allegiances. We can leave you in peace, or... I can put you and your companions on a high-priority eliminate list. Which will it be? You don't understand what's at stake. So, are you in? I'm still trying to figure you out, Adam. It's clear you're running from something. I can't help what I am. All I cared about to start with was getting out of the DMZ. There's no going back now. Things are looking up, Hive. I think I see light at the end of the tunnel. So soon. Oh, dang it, I had it wrong. 12.025, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I was clo close enough, right? Close enough? All right. 12.025, and no, there aren't over 12,000 uh, booths over at PAX East, anybody wondering, I saw that in chat. No, 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 that's not how it works. The various numbers indicate certain very specific details, uh, but yeah. Uh, if you do get yourself a hold of a map or have heard other individuals talking about it, we're kind of like, if you're looking straight at the map, we're like in the lower right side right next to some other big named folks, but that's okay. We'll just draw their attention away from them. It's, uh, that's how it works. So it'll be it'll be great, but uh, I will be there. Geek Bite will be there. We have another individual from Rockfish who will be there as well. So you can come shake my hand and be incredibly intimidated by how tall I actually am. All right, all that out of the way, we are now going to truly get into our save file a pick up where Geek Bite left off, and away we go. If you guys have any questions at all through any of this, ask. We are a very transparent development team. We got 20 days left, so if you want to know something, now is the time to sneak that question in so that we can provide those added details. Cool. I also think that I'm in a combat location. I think that's where I saved. So I've been practicing my bomber skills since, um, well, I haven't been the best at it. All right, so this is the place. Okay, yeah. Time to All lay right. down the law on these guys. So, um, a couple couple things that I wanted to point out. I have recently learned that uh, the bomber has a pretty good ultimate, and I'm going to start using the ultimate. And also, the bomber has this ability to where your secondaries are cost in energy instead of uh, quantity. So, I'm going to actually use my secondaries. Just some, just some pro gamer tips I'm giving you guys. Uh, I know you haven't seen me do it yet, but uh, that's that's the way that this is gonna go down. Oh, that's a new sound. That's a new sound. By the way, let's just, uh, maybe not, maybe not. Okay, hang on a second. We need to, oh, that's in a tormentor? Oh gosh, okay. All right, hang on a second. Oh my goodness, Gravy, hang on a second. We need to restart. Everything is in shambles. Everything looks terrible. Everything is awful. Let's just start clearing things out a little bit. Yeah? I said I was going to. Oh yeah, we're totally done. Yeah, this tormentor uh, definitely was a problem for us getting right in here. Also, this other elite right behind us. Yeah, big, big problems. Big problems. All right. We're gonna, we're gonna start that over and we're gonna do it the correct way now. But that that noise, you hear, you hear that noise? That is the sound of a missile silo as opposed to a missile turret. There is a big difference. And the main difference is the pain that it induces. A lot of our veteran Everspace One players are going to know 
the uh, the very stark contrast of audio that is present there. And we have just satisfied that audio noise uh, in Everspace 2 with that chime of death and destruction if you do not handle yourself. Whew, all right, wow. Incredible when we use our secondaries, how it comes together. Also, when we don't rush directly into a base, makes the world of difference, yeah? My goodness. Uh, I, I really wanna just, yeah, let's just, right there seems good. We're just gonna do that. <laughs> oh, look at all the things getting ticked off the base that we've destroyed suddenly. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Probably should have started with the uh, destabilization. All right. Yeah, this is going uh, much better. Wow, we we really cleaned up that base hard, didn't we? Excellent. So um, just to kind of go over a couple of the things that have changed since the last run through, um, I did a bunch of jobs. So if you look at my Renown, for example, we've, we've increased it up to here. Um, so yeah, we're getting somewhat-ish close to professional somewhat-ish. Um, our inventory has been mostly the same. I've just been getting a couple legendary 13 elements here uh, to try and uh, stack things up in our favor. But I also got this calibrated prime zapper and it's been chef's kiss, so I'm keeping it. And uh, yeah, I'm, I am playing on very hard, yes. I don't know why I do this to myself, but I enjoy it. It's, it's like my favorite thing to do. In most games, they're like, oh yeah, this is the recommended play level. And I'm like, nah. <laughs> and I just throw myself into the chaos. All right, let's see if we can... Uh, actually, you know what? Let's just scorpion missile this guy. I don't even want to deal with the bombs. Just get wrecked. Yeah. Just have a really big shield, and I don't want to deal with it. Oh, did he not die? Excuse me, sir. All right, now hang on a second. I don't like where this is going. You come with me. That's right. We do not want to get overwhelmed here. That is our downfall. Okay. Okay. So sluggish in this ship. Okay, we just have two turrets left. And then the base is secure. Then we'll have to fight a little boss. Just a little scrub. Another drone. Should have been a one shot. <clears throat> and an outlaw turret. Man, I can't believe we actually hit everything else on the base. Normally, you have to kind of do a little bit of flying around and searching for things. I was going to show you uh, how we've adjusted whenever you have just a couple items left. Because when you do now, it will actually highlight the location of the last elements that are coming oh my gosh go away um it'll highlight the last elements that you have remaining those proto scouts man they are not messing around and i really don't want to mess oh my gosh knock it off Oh, it's so tight! This is uh, not looking super great for us. Ah, I wasn't in rage! Are you kidding me? Finish the job. Great, signature is fine. Here you go. This is this is not this is not a good position to be in at all. Uh, but we did finish the job, so that's that's something at least. Please die, please, please. Please, thank you. Sometimes all you need is half a pixel of health. That's all, that's all we really needed. Job's complete. 
No problems whatsoever. Nope, not a single one. All right, let's scoop up this stuff kind of uh, away from those um, mines and then we're, we're gonna head over to Prescott where we're gonna repair our dang ship. It's, uh, it's, it's not looking too hot. Whew. No, I don't want to pop G at the very end there. I don't, I don't think that would have been an effective strategy. I probably would have killed myself more than the uh, opponents. So, uh, yeah. All right. There we go. There we go. Oh, um, and as I mentioned, we did kind of pick up where Geekbyte left off a little bit. So the signal tracing or whatever it's called, uh, let's, let's look at the official name. Data phishing. I'm going to be turning that in. I just completed that one, and then I was on my way back to hit that base, that job for Kato. So I'm going to turn this stuff in, then we'll talk to uh, the next steps. I am not seeing any um, any frame drops or anything, but if you guys do happen to see anything going on, let me know and I will uh, very quickly adjust what I can. Oh my God. <laughs> Woo! All right, let's... Um... <clears throat> oh my goodness. That was, uh, that was definitely a, a thing that just happened. Perfect timing. All right. So we're going to sneak on into the freelancer hangar to finish up data fishing. There you go. 3.86 quintilobytes of random data. I do hope your client can find value in binge drinking videos. That is up to them to decide. I, for my part, am very glad that I can finally show them something at all. Sounds like you had this assignment lying around for a while now. That is true. Frankly, you were the first one who made it back alive. Let me check the integrity of the files. You should never have taken the assignment. Sending contractors to their doom for something this vague doesn't seem right to me. If it was any other client, I would agree. But to people like this, don't say no. Well, packages look fine. Here's your payment. I guess you don't want to elaborate on your client's identity? No. But now that you've proven yourself, you may find out soon enough. I'll call you if something new comes up. All right. See ya. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, I'm seeing some uh, conversation uh, surrounding some various elements and, uh, uh, Definitely keep up the conversation surrounding basically anything you want, but do remember our focal point here, as always, is Everspace 2 related questions and answers and about our 20 days left of development. Uh, goodness gravy, it's getting, it's getting so close. And uh, so yeah, now that we turned in that mission, I want to fly around to, oh wait, no, it would be this hangar, whoops. No, I wanna, I wanna dock here. Yeah, I wanna look at the other ship options to see if maybe we should swap, since I'm not the best in the bomber. What else we have? We have, oh, we have tier threes now? Okay, but they're too expensive. So are the tier twos? But how expensive are they? How expensive? Aw, oh, we're, we're like 12K away. All right, we'll keep our bomber for now. We'll keep the bomber for now. And, uh, but I do think we're gonna sell some of our stuff. Um, I've been scrapping a lot of things, but I do want more funds. So let's just go ahead and highlight a lot of these things that we're just gonna, we're just gonna sell them. We're just gonna sell them. Way too many energy boosters. And only mining equipment, we'll go ahead and sell that too. That could sell for a decent amount. So that's 5,000, still a bit short. I, I wanna hang on to these commodities because I want them to be more valuable. Cause like, look at this one, this sells for 2,000. But if we can get to the right spot, I mean, we're gonna be, we're gonna have so much more and we have some decent space. So we're gonna hang on to that. Signal decoder for 1.5. Eh, we're also gonna, actually no, we're gonna sell that. We are also going to sell that, okay. Back into the wild. Back into the wild. So next up is going on over to Cato Palace to turn in a job, as well as, I guess this is also gonna kind of trigger the talent acquisition a little bit further, and then we will uh, 
then we'll officially be going after Maddox. Oh my gosh. So many things that I needed to tidy up. Woo. Welcome back, Mr. Roslin. Mr. Kato would like a moment of your time, if you'll wait just a moment. So long as I don't have to deal with that jerk. Tell Uncle Kay I've got it, toots. <laughs> so I did some favors from the job board. What's next? Hey, now, no need to get testy. I've got good news for you. Mr. Kato is pleased with your recent work. Why can't he tell me himself? He doesn't have time to personally deal with every hotshot who floats our way. But he has asked for you to handle something that requires a little more discretion and compensates correspondingly. I'm listening. A simple task, retrieval of a valuable asset. What is it? Not it. She. Codename Clockwork and the best damn safe cracker in a business. Okay, so when you say discretion, you obviously want this asset to remain on the hush. Obviously, but we got word the Okar authorities are interested in her whereabouts. She poached from the wrong dirty aliens. She's been hiding out, but our sources say they're getting close. Don't you have a way to warn her? She shut down long-range comms to avoid detection. I'm not so sure I want to start messing with the Okar authorities. It's an in-and-out job. If you're fast enough, you should get there before them. We need you because your ship ain't tied to our organization. I hope I don't regret this. At the first sign of trouble, I'll bail. It won't come to that. Like I said, it's in and out. Sure. <clears throat> All right. Whew. All right. As you can see, I still have my uh, dove ability to see way too many jobs, but uh, don't mind that. We are going to go ahead and launch out of here. And I think what we're also going to do... Actually, wait. Did I see an orange Kato's commodity? minion is hardly a reliable source. You believe you can undertake this operation without the Okar discovering you? Like you said, in and out. Let's find this codename clockwork and make the extraction. Because I'm actually awfully close to buying that interceptor. I think I'm just going to sell stuff to, to basically get it. Okay, yeah, solar panels. Look at that. Beautiful. Um, and, you know, we can hang on to the medicine to make a better profit elsewhere. Actually, a much better profit. But this is going to be good enough. We'll go back by that, I think, an interceptor? Because that's going to be a nice improvement over where we are currently at. Not that the bomber isn't a good ship. It really is. In the right hands. I have been getting better. A little bit. Alright. Let's find this interceptor. I, I am a fan of the way that one looks, too. That is a nice build. Ironically, the stats don't look as uh, as convincing as I would like them to be, that this is going to be a, a solid purchase, but the maneuverability, that handling, is huge, and I think that's going to make the big difference for me in particular. So we're going to go ahead and buy and sell our bomber. See you later, bomber. You've been good to us. Now with our new ship, we of course have to customize it just a little bit. And we also have a fourth weapon slot. Oh, that's so good. Corrosion injector or annihilator virus. Hmm. Or nanotransmitter. That could also be good. Or maneuverability. That could also be smart. Let's do that actually. Let's do let's do energize boost. We are going to do high pressure, because who doesn't like ramming speed? And uh, check our inventory. We will need to apply one new primary eventually. We don't have any money to purchase one, though, so we'll have to just find one. But, uh, yeah, should be should be fairly good. Now, if I remember, yeah, our destabilizers do auto-fire, so we want to have that one effectively equipped. Oh, we didn't customize the ship look. It's fine. We'll, we'll keep this for now. We'll keep this for now, and then we'll customize the next time we dock somewhere. We'll customize the next time we dock somewhere. All right, so we need to go over here. Mm. 
<clears throat> Been doing a lot of unknown signals over the course of the last two weeks. Woo! Woo! They are fun. I do enjoy them. I've also really been enjoying, I know that this isn't something you have available yet. Let me see if it actually happened. Uh, yeah. What's been also really pleasant in our current build, and I think that you guys are gonna appreciate this so much, is these jobs that pop up in the middle of your super lighting. They just pop up, random location, and somebody's like, hey, please help us. And you can accept that job right now while you're just flying, turn around and do it. You'll get paid like it's a job, but you didn't have to pick it up from job board. It's rather convenient. I've been uh, discovering that I like picking up the jobs like this because then it's just kind of like on my way. I don't have to like go back to a station or anything like that. For me, it works pretty well. We think that you're gonna like that too. Is it a dynamic mission type? Uh, I'm not sure how you would properly describe it, but all of the different jobs are, we, we tried to make them varied in their opportunities and their challenges. So some people might enjoy certain jobs over others, but there's a little bit of everything. jumped into empty space? Uh, because there's a space station over there? My sensors detect nothing. Good day there, Adam Rosslin. It's been a while since I had a clone come for a visit. Okay, I don't like where this is going. Where what is going? All right, Hive, I need you to focus. Run your sensors again. What is this place? Mostly, it's just smoke and mirrors. All it takes is a wave of my hand. My sensors are overclocking. And it's gone. You may call me Fallon Pango. How can I help you, Adam? Cut the act. Don't mess with my ship. And how the hell do you know about me? As secrets go in the DMZ, yours is not a very big one. Just take the colonial fleet. They can't post warrants for you since no one is supposed to know that you exist, but they still talk about you a lot. That doesn't answer my question. You could say that I simply like to listen to the waves passing through the ether while I tinker away on my devices. You can't just turn on the radio and tune into encrypted fleet talk. You're some kind of hacker. Who else knows about me? That depends and why you've come to see me all the way out here. I'm looking for a material encryptor. For whom? Can't say. Tit for tat. Nicely done. I can offer you a version for 20 credits, the other for 2 million. Both do exactly the same. Then what's the difference? The cheap one is sponsored by a third-party provider. The premium price is exactly what it would cost without the sponsorship. I am not buying the one for two mil. Of course. I'll just remove it from my loadout then. All right. All we have to do is buy this incredibly cheap 20 credit material encryptor and away we go. No problem, right? No problem whatsoever. Oh, medicine sells a little bit higher over here. That's fine. This is the hardware module. The drivers are transferred directly to your ship. Thanks for doing business. My pleasure. Take care, Adam. Wonderful. And just a quick style change, I think. Uh, real quick. We could go back to the same colors we used on our bomber, but I wanna just do, just, let's just have a little bit of fun. Cause you know, we have, we have a number of things. We unlocked some new colors as well since last time. Let's go this more creamy color, the Stardust. Um, and let's highlight Let's highlight green. We've got like this kind of poisonish build going on. So maybe we should do that. Here, let's do this. Kind of go like that a little bit more. Window tent, we do have a green. Oh, nice. Ah, that's that's what I like to see right there. Uh, engine colors, do we have a green? Yes. Oh my goodness, it's all coming together. We even have this subtle green too. Oh. All right, we're gonna do the main green as our main thrusters and then the booster is gonna be 
That nice, bright, oh yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, that came together way too easily. What in the world? Okay, uh, last, last but not least, let's add a, a little decal here. Here, let's do our veteran status. Uh, we'll do, uh, let's see, let's keep, let's keep the logo sort of, you know, accessible here. We'll just kind of go like that, I think. And then the text, let's see. It's a little off-putting, honestly. That's better. We'll go, we'll go with that. It's fine, right? It's fine. It works. It works. I know I have a couple ship modules. Oh my gosh. Do I, I have, I have lots of ship modules. Okay. Except I don't have any wings unlocked. Okay. Nice. <laughs> but we are going to go ahead and keep what we have. We're going to keep what we have. I quite enjoy it. So very good. We got some, uh, we got a nice splash of corrosion mines and scorpion missiles. So I think it, it's a nice appealing corrosive ship. Nice theming. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm very happy with this. All right. Let's take this encryptor of pneumatics with no problems in the way. Are you tired of being picked on? Then why not treat yourself to a Salver Pulse 9000? Salver Armament Group. Because even a loser deserves a good laser. What was that? The signal is emanating from my own systems. Ah, serves me right for buying cheap scrap from a hacker. I am running diagnostics. Attempt jumping again. Ouch, my teeth! Sorry, kid, but you've got cavities. Oh, again? But don't worry. Try Footnax. Footnax hand lotion. Your teeth deserve it. The messages are triggered by the new software. Can you disable them? Not without deleting the entire package and rendering the encryptor useless. I need to have another word with that Fallon Pango guy. All right, back to the station we go. Hey, you didn't tell me that the encryptor came with ads. As I said, its main component is very rare. It's the only way I'm able to sell it for such a low price. If you cannot pay, you either have to live with the commercials or find a replacement. What kind of replacement are we talking about? A very old one. If you feel adventurous, you can go to these coordinates. You will immediately know what I want when you see it. In the meantime, I'll remove the cheap module from your ship. Guess I have no other choice. I should probably get a more energy-based weapon before I go. I'm not sure the calibrated Prime Zapper is going to cut it. But we're going to try! Maybe we'll have a pit stop along the way and pick something up. And guys, I am not avoiding questions if you guys are wondering. Keep on asking. Geekbyte is in the chat and he's cataloging them. And then we are going to have a section here pretty soon, actually, in just a moment. Actually, we can get started right now, where I'm going to be answering the questions that have been cataloged. So, Geekbyte, go ahead and join me. Let's start answering some of these questions as I start traveling across Superlight. Hello, good evening, everyone. Hope you're all well. Uh, right, we have a few lined up for you. Um, first up, from Christoph Saliga over on YouTube. Um, do you plan to start the game at the same time for all regions or are many players going to move to Australia to room 1.0 early? The game should be that. launched at the exact same time across the world. So it's a, it's a great question. Uh, all of our other releases, which have literally been won, uh, did that same thing. So uh, pretty confident of that. Now, if you are speaking on the front of consoles, we do have separate launch schedule for the PC slash Mac slash Linux versus uh, like the full optimization for the Steam Deck, which we are hoping is gonna be as close as possible to 1.0, uh, but you'd still be able to like have it on the Steam Deck, but it's not gonna be like fully optimized possibly. And then we have consoles which are coming out in the summer. Uh, so that's kind of how that's all gonna be diluted. It's, it's uh, but yeah, whenever like the official, hey, the game is available now, Wherever you're at in the world, it's available now, now. Yeah, cool. 
Excellent, excellent. Right, um, Brian Brown over on YouTube as well. Uh, with the 1.0 release uh, finishing the story is the main goal. Is there any chance to get more story lore in the future DLC like there was done with Everspace 1? I would be disappointed with my team if we didn't. <laughs> it's a playful question. I can't answer it further than that, though. So we yeah. definitely want to expand the world and the characters and, you know, everything as much as we can. So even if it's not like the mainline story and adding on to that, which I don't think would be very fruitful as DLC. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you can certainly expect more lore to enter the picture when we get to that. Uh, the DLC, by the way, for anybody wondering, is scheduled to come out in 2024, about mid 2024. So yeah, as of right now. <laughs> Great answer. Right, uh, Pokem Spark has got a couple of things lined up in, in one question here uh, over on YouTube. Um, AMD FSR 2.0, is it coming to the game? Uh, FSR 2.0, gosh. Oh man, this technical question, I've seen it so many times I get confused because there's some that are like 1.0 and then there's 2.0 and 2.1 and 3.0. Um, I know in most of the sort of technical elements on that front, we are doing like the 2.0s and the 2.1s, but the 3.0s are not where we are going. So man, that sounds like almost kind of shady in how I'm responding to that because I'm not answering it completely direct. Um, and Michael, if you are in the chat, if you can provide that quick added clarity, I would appreciate it. But um, pretty sure FSR 2.0 is, but uh, yeah, just look at the options says Igmar. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Let's look at the options. We have uh, we have our renderer. Okay, hang on a second. How do I how do I access my renderer? Upscale. Oh, DLSS quality mode, quality balance, performance, ultra performance. Okay, beautiful. Uh, we have our AI upscaler FSR. Uh, oh, FSR uh, is the 2.1. That's the one. Uh, yep. So there there you go. Thanks, Igmar. We'll just uh, show this all. Hopefully Michael's okay with it, even though he didn't approve it. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> but I've been running on these streams, the DLSS at quality. So, uh, yeah. Oh my gosh, my head's been in the way the entire... Oh my goodness, great. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, all right. Let's try this all one more time. A AI upscaler, we have DLSS. We have FSR 1.0 and 2.1.1. Goodness gravy. And then we have like the FSR triple upscaler quality and you can do all these things as well. And for sake of the stream, let's just, let's go to performance maybe? Now nah, we'll do balance, we'll do balance. We'll just that. Yeah, and uh, now I remember why I can't change the renderer because that's DirectX 11. The way to change that is by exiting the game and restarting it. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I'd also run it in DirectX 11 because for me, where the game's currently in development, uh, with 20 days out, uh, DirectX 11 is a little bit smoother performance for myself. Uh, there are individuals on the team who have been running it in DirectX 12 and say that that's a little bit smoother. So I think it's gonna kind of come down to system specs and whatnot. But uh, yeah, anyway, there's a bunch of information. There we go. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Igmar. I do appreciate that. Right, uh, just to continue on Pokem's question, um... They're wondering, are there any plans for bringing back Everspace 1, the official soundtrack, uh, and if we could possibly have some ambient soundtrack and combat soundtrack separately? There's not any plans to bring the Everspace 1 soundtrack into Everspace 2. I mean, it's certainly something that could happen, um, but it's it's not in the plans. Like, it's, it's we, don't, we don't want to do that. We want Everspace 1 to be that and its music, and we want Everspace 2 to be this and its music. They are different games. Yes, the story and the lore is all bound together, but gameplay experience wise, any veterans out there of Everspace 1 can tell you quite immediately, they are different games. And so the music also has been catered accordingly to those differences. Because audio is an important aspect of game design. Ah, ah, who'd have thought? All right. <laughs> 
Excellent. Right. Uh, Christoph Saliga uh, again over on YouTube. Uh, do you have save, the same save game, the Steam version and the Game Pass, or is the Windows game system format will not work with Steam and Steam with Game Pass? He's just basically asking for if there's any compatibility between the two. So it's a bit of a technical question. That is also a technical question that I'd defer to Igmar if he wants to answer that. Um, to my understanding, I know that we have like subtle delays whenever we're updating like the Game Pass side of things. So my guess is that there is a difference. Um, but whenever we do have those updates and whatnot, uh, it's a very short delay. Um, normally like a couple of days at worst, maybe a week. But hopefully that's changed a little bit more. In fact, we've improved that a little bit more over time because it used to be like we had like a month delay and that was awful. So, but yeah. And the same thing kind of applies to like the um, the uh, good old games as well. Like generally speaking, those updates also kind of get a slight delay in them. Um, but the games, themselves cannot be swapped specifically from Steam uh, to the Game Pass version. Uh, there are individuals who have managed to do so, Igmar tells us, and there's a thread in the Steam forums about it. So thank you for that added little context, Igmar, and thank you for the question as well. It's beautiful. All right. Uh, last one for the time being, uh, T3Cube on Twitch. Uh, a question about future content post 1.0. Uh, currently, you guys are promoting a new save for 1.0 due to the amount of new content with the release. Uh, for the content you guys have missed, will players also experience the same in regards to having progressed in the story to a point where they will miss some of the changes, new features, content, and play alterations through the patches? I mean, yeah, I think... The, the overarching answer, I mean, it's going to be kind of something that we've said multiple times, but for anybody who's missed it, like, if you are playing an old save into the 1.0, it is very likely that there will be some sort of transference issue that comes up somewhere. It might be something super minor, like you had uh, gotten like a more percentage of locations and like one place you had 100%, another one you had 100%, another one you had 60%, you load up your old save and it's gonna be like 0%, 50%, and 33% or something. You're gonna be like, what the heck? It's because items were moved and uh, adjusted and stuff. Uh, the storyline itself, you wouldn't miss anything that you've passed. You might have to go into your data tab and go to your story so far and figure out what maybe you missed because these are all these cutscenes are being updated, of course, for 1.0, and they might have a difference of how the delivery is of the messaging uh, between the characters exchanges and stuff like that. You may even see some completely new things uh, entirely uh, that you would completely have missed as well. <coughs> and so, uh, yeah, so when you use an old save, it is a 100% guaranteed chance that something is gonna be off. If it's going to be game breaking, we can't tell you. So far in our tests, I think we've only had a couple instances where an old save was just outright crashing the game and it was because of obscure circumstances with how it was saved. So I would not worry too much on that front. Still, we do recommend a 1.0 save wipe from a personal level, but we did incorporate that using old saves because it was hotly requested and we listened to you guys. So there you go. I know there was just more- a bit of a, an update on that from T3Q, he's just okay. asking like further down the line if the game's patched to say 1.8 uh, with a 1.0 save, would they miss anything? I, it's, I mean, it's not going to be, any of our patches are not going to be retroactive changes for old saves. Old saves will constantly remain old saves. The new saves and patches thereof, in addition to that, I mean, we're not like patching in more story. So you're not gonna, like if you start a new save, you're not gonna get a patch that then you miss stuff. It's going to fix stuff. It's going to adjust stuff. It's not going yeah. to, uh, it's, yeah. So hopefully that makes sense. There's no reason why after the 1.0 release, we'd be like, oh, hey, we just added a bunch of content behind the scenes. Now, if you want to experience it, you have to start your game completely over again. Ha <laughs> ha, gotcha. That would suck. That would be lame. And we're not going to do that. Absolutely not. So, cool. Do you have one more question for me and I'll keep going? 
Yeah, I've just got one that's just come in from Excelsior over on YouTube. A uh, bit of a speculative one, as they generally do. Uh, any new info regarding the plasma thrower? Will it be included at 1.0? <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. You know that we want to include as much Everspace One stuff as possible. Um, we've also said publicly that the plasma thrower was something that we kind of prototyped and it had some major technical issues. So, uh, yeah. Is it something that could appear in Everspace 2? Yeah. Am I guaranteeing it right now in the stream? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. You can be hopeful. We can be too. Time will tell. We'd love it to be in the game. But it's not, and it's technically not planned. Sorry. Eric is confirming it. Don't listen to his lies. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you guys are great. I love it. All right, so now we're heading over to Forlornville. Thanks so much for the questions, by the way, from everybody and Geekbyte, your service to read them off. That does help a ton. If you guys have more questions as we continue through this, ask away. We love making sure you know the details of what's going on. All right, so Forlorn Vale. Did we change our emissive lights? Did I? Oh, no. Oh, no, I didn't change my emissive lights, did I? I need to change my emissive lights to green. This must be yeah, they're place. still yellow. Where do the hacker's coordinates lead? To a cave entrance below. Another cave. Hopefully without crawlers this time. Rookie mistake. Failing to update my emissive lights in our customization. Otherwise, I really like the way this ship looks. This place would have been absolutely solid to see those beautiful green emissive lights and my shots are terrible. Hang on a second. Am I out of, oh, I'm out of range. Gosh, guys, guys, oof. This is this is not looking too pretty. All right, hang on a second. Let's just. There we go. Alec, I actually appreciate you showing up. Definitely appreciate it. Apparently, I still have a lot to learn in very hard mode. Excellent. Don't shoot me, Alec. You calm down there with those lasers. All right. Oh, more enemies over there even? Good, that's crazy. All right. Alec! 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 It's fine. Oh my gosh. We do need to take out this raider though. He's gonna be major problems if he gets us webbed again. Yeah, that auto cannon's taking a while. Hello there. You know what? Go in a straight line. There we go. You. I want you to go down there. Thank you. Much better. The entrance is blocked. You will require a detonator to get through. Didn't I see a GNB dig site when we flew in? Bet I can borrow one from them. I assume steel one would be the more appropriate phrasing. All right, let's see what we can muster over here. This isn't an ordinary mining operation. 
Hive, do you see that? If by that you are referring to the ancient structure up ahead, I would be able to offer some information. The ancients were believed to be higher beings, distantly related to and revered by the Oka. They ruled over a powerful and far-reaching empire, yet they mysteriously vanished from historical record some millennia ago. You don't have to tell me. I painfully remember our previous encounters with them. GNB should know better than to risk a run-in with an ancient warden. All right. So that's a that's a one for one callback from Everspace One. The first time you run into ancients, that is actually what Hive will say. Feels good. Feels nostalgic for some reason. Ooh, a Jaeger? Hang on a second. Uh, I actually want more energy DPS. Ah! Unfortunate. All right. System recovery routine? Yes, please. All right. Let's take this on over. Prime Zappers are a variant of Coilgun, which normally has two kilometer range. Probably just forgot that it's 1.7 kilometers instead. Yep, that is exactly what happened. We have made several adjustments over the uh, variations of the Coilguns uh, because they were too similar. They were, they were too similar. It was just like, why even have a different Coilgun at all? They're just all the same. And uh, so we fixed that. So now there's some variety to them and there's certain reasons to use some over the others. Like, for example, range. Also, the um, uh, the prime zappers are strong. They they are strong, but they lack the range. You in the mood for some more spelunking, Hive? I do not have moods, but modes. Activating indoor navigation mode. Ah, oh, don't pretend you can't be moody, my friend. <laughs> You may even be the moodiest AI I've... Activating pilot ignoring mode. Oh my gosh. I love my team so much. We are also going to save the game right here uh, just because we don't want to accidentally do something uh, really dumb. So, here we go. Here we go. It's atmospheric mode. Here we go deeper and deeper into a long lost alien cave. Ooh. I, know, I, just, I find it quite pleasing to immersify oneself in that sense. All right, here we go. What is this? Well, you tell me. I have no data regarding anything like it. This must be the place the Bovis hacker asked you to find. I'm afraid you're right about this. Any signs of some incredibly rare object nearby? My sensors are unable to detect anything in here. It would appear you are on your own. Excellent. So we have these little segments that break up all the combating that goes on. Um, and uh, this one is very much harkening back to Everspace One, as well as just expanding the lore of our game series, revolving around the Ancients. Something that is uh, somewhat of a creepy, but also like legendary sort of thing that's been going on in the world. All it takes is a little bit of exploration and looking around. You'll find these little ancient rooms. But just plugging them in is not enough. There is a little bit more to this puzzle. So as you can see, 
when we go up to them, it says rotate. And we can cycle them around. But how do we know which one needs to be facing, you ask? Well, to that I would say, let's keep looking around to find out. Z! Okay. Z. What's over here? We've got the... something like a sort of D. Here we have the sort of S. And regardless of whether we can find the last one or not, it doesn't really matter. We can just uh, cycle it until it turns on. Oh, that's new. Thanks, team. Almost had it. There we go. Here we go again. Trying to stay close to them. Using the same tactics I used in Everspace 1. You stay close, their shots normally go around you instead of hit you. Maybe I'm being a little too bold, I'm not sure. Now you can all see why I wanted to go for an energy weapon. <laughs> ah, that's not good. Ooh, okay. Almost. than the ones we encountered in the past. For one, it did not posthumously turn into a black hole. Yeah, I remember. Better wrap things up around here before it remembers too. Ten to one, but this is what the hacker's looking for. Time to get out before another warden shows up. Excellent. Let's take whatever this thing is back to the hacker and never come back here. I agree. Whoop. Well, that was fun. Let's head back to Fallon Pango.
mouse bump. Felt pretty good about that combat there. Felt pretty good about that. Don't know if that would have went as well in the bomber at all. In fact, I can almost guarantee it. At least my style of play with the bomber probably would have been painful. Um, I do also want to mention, I don't think I'm overstepping my bounds in mentioning this. I'm just going to let you guys know. I'm just going to let you guys know. We are still planning on tweaking certain boss uh, battles. So what you did just see there is not actually 100% done. There's probably gonna be some adjustments. If not by 1.0, uh, then probably shortly thereafter. But uh, internally, I can say very clearly that uh, overall, we aren't entirely satisfied with our current state of the Ancient Warden, okay? Wanna be very transparent with you on that so that you know where we stand. And you also know that we do have plans to at least tweak it in some capacity at some point. Again, I'm not guaranteeing any sort of tweaks by 1.0, hopefully we can, but it is something that we do want to go back and address, uh, especially because what you just witnessed was me at the same level of the mission that we're doing with not a heavily optimized build with a lot of equipment that was actually under leveled on very hard, on very hard. It should definitely require the optimized uh, loadout on very hard at that state. So just being very transparent. Ooh, ship module. That would have been really nice for that engagement. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh well. All right, let's let's get in here and see what their talk is all about. Is this what you wanted? You found it. Care to swap this for a material encryptor? Certainly. But please be careful with it. It took me a long time to perfect it. Say, with all this information you're hoarding, what can you tell me about a man called Maddox? I assume you're referring to Henley Maddox, the comrade of Dexter Bashar, whose signature was broadcast alongside yours when you were held by Bloodstar. That's the guy. I don't know much. He's a very private person and always avoided doing business with me. I understand he killed his superior during the recent war, and is now searching for something very valuable. But the only objects of real value are ancient things, like the one you just brought to me. Ancient and dangerous. The Olkar guarding these artifacts closely. By the way, you may care to know that they are already on the move. Who? The Olkar? Yes, a raid on Avonrest. It's been on the wavelengths for some time now. Since that's where you flew in from when coming here, I assume that is where your friend is hiding. Oh, scrap. Gotta go. Don't be a stranger, Adam. There's a bit of information there. Excellent. I also see a couple of individuals just joining us because they're like, wait, what have I missed? What, why, why did I not know that the stream started? Um, yeah. Daylight Savings Time did take over in America. It has not over in Europe yet. I believe it's it's like the 26th or something for you guys, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I might be mistaken, but regardless, we're gonna have a wonky uh, couple of weeks because of that really silly difference in interaction. We did make a post on Twitter and we uh, made a statement on Discord. So if you are following us the appropriate places, you will be notified of whenever we are uh, jumping into these live streams. And I do encourage you guys to do so, so that you don't miss them. And we will be continuing to do these live streams, by the way, after the 1.0 launch. So uh, just, just know that. Also, do we have green? We got green. We got green. It's not, it's not the green that I wanted. I wanted the brighter green, but this will work. This will work. All right. So now we are at a pretty good stopping place for more questions. So let's do that. Geekbyte, go ahead and join me here. I know that I've seen a few more questions kind of populating, so let's get on that. Let's cover some thoughts. Right, 
we have a question from Pokem Spark over on YouTube. Uh, are we going to have Steam Point Shop content on post uh, or on launch or post launch? The Steam Steam what? Steam Points. You accrue Steam Points uh, on Steam oh. and you can spend them for various things. Yeah, uh, so Everspace One uses Steam Points because there's like the little uh, emojis and, and the backgrounds and stuff. So like you can get yeah. those. I am rather confident that we would have something similar in Everspace Two. Um, we even have like the achievements, which I think they got recently updated with uh, iconography now. So if you actually go to Everspace 2's Steam page and you look at the achievements, even though you don't know what they're for, you can see pictures there. So that's kind of fun. Um, that's not related at all, but we were talking about Steam. I got carried away. Oh, my. oops. <laughs> oh, it just came out. Anyway, uh, but yeah, so I, I would expect so. I would expect so. So next question, please. Uh, excellent. Right, same again from Pokem Spark. Okay. Um, what is the approximate projected time for completion of the main campaign? The approximate completion time, if you are more or less streamlining the main story, you are going to have around 30 to 40 hours of playtime. If, um, if you are trying to aim for 100% completion, your first time is probably going to net you over 100 hours. If you become a veteran and then you return to the game, you try on like a higher difficulty or whatever, or you're trying to speed run, um, yeah, I mean, that's going to look different. But uh, yeah, main main core gameplay, uh, campaign experience is about 30 to 40 hours. And if you're trying to do everything in the entire world, it's probably going to be closer to 80 hours, 90 hours, maybe even 100. And on top of that, there's still going to be more, you know, content that is refreshing at the end game state where you can just keep going over and over again so you can play to your heart's content so yep excellent uh right brian brown on youtube wants to know since the current difficulty settings are simple percentage changes to damage given received uh, which stated to not be uh, the final vision. Uh, what changes can we expect to difficulty settings for 1.0? So that is fantastic follow-up question. And we do still want to make a couple of alternate changes in the back end of the differences. And we have started to do so. I can't get into all the details as of right now. Um, I would like it to be as transparent as possible so that you know, like when you're choosing your difficulty, what it is, but that's not looking like it's gonna take effect I can assure you, though, that there's going to be like number differences and en enemy encounters, uh, depending on what difficulty that you're in. Drop rates will not be adjusted whatsoever. Drop rates are going to be exactly the same, uh, no matter if you're playing on very easy up to very hard, anything in between that. Drop rates are identical. Nothing's different. Nothing's going to change. So you're not content gated whatsoever. Uh, there will be stat differences, of course, because um, that's, you know, uh, but outside of that, uh, right now, there's not any crazy plans. There's nothing absurd. You're not going to see new enemy types at very hard or, uh, you know, gimped ones at very easy. It's primarily, it's primarily stat changes as of right now. So, yeah, some number adjustments here and there, but, uh, yeah, that's probably what it's going to be like at 1.0 release. Probably will get tweaked a little bit further. The expectation and the reality of it is probably it's going to be more on the side of stat-based differences uh, at this time for 1.0. So I know it's a little bit discouraging hearing me say that, especially for those of you who are in that camp of wanting, you know, that authentic crazy challenge. Uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, that is just where we're at with development and what we are able to jump on. So, yep. Cool, cool. Uh, there's something that's just come on um, on the Twitch channel from Stieg. Uh, he's just asking um, about the... He's been looking at the product on and off since the start. Uh, is the build-your-own-ship modular system design on? And I know you're just in the menu now, so it might be... Oh, yeah, we're still example. working on it. It's definitely not finalized, but, yeah, I mean, you can see here, like, we are... It's it's in full bloom, at least in our builds. Um, I, I I think we actually finished up some of the, actually it might be completely in. Um, maybe we did finalize some of the other little kinks, excuse me. Um, so yeah, but there is, um, 
the way that these show up, by the way, these are dropped very similarly to like the colors of your ship. So the same way that you would go and pick these up out in space somewhere, that's how you're also going to acquire those ship modules. Marvelous, marvelous. Uh, last question for now, and that's from Spook Knight over on Twitch. Uh, do the symbols, uh, going back to the Warden fight that you had, mm. do the symbols have an actual character name? Uh, they've had to use their own idea of how they look as a reference, a bit like you with the Z and or the Z, sorry. Yeah. Um, et cetera. Yeah, it's, it's all, you can call it Z, that's fine. I think everybody understands what that <laughs> yeah. means. Um, yeah, yeah. So, all right. the, um, I know that we have done a lot of iconography internally in regards to like how the ancient beings are represented. And we do take great care in that. So I wouldn't say that we've developed our own language. I think that might be taking a little bit too far, but there are certain glyphs that we use for specific purposes. And there's also glyphs that we have that we just throw wherever the crap we want to just to make it look ancient. All right. So there's a bit of both. There's a bit of both. It's just a representation of this, you know, civilization or creature or whatever that had existed prior. And you're just seeing sort of like what that looks like. And I would actually take this just a tad bit further and encourage any of our developer friends out there, whenever you're making a game, whenever you want to add or incorporate some added lore bits and you're just like, oh, let's just slap in any random glyphs or imagery or whatever, make sure it does actually have a purpose for being there. Aesthetics are nice, aesthetics are pleasing, but if there's not some overarching tie-in, it's 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 not gonna feel the best as you continue that style of development. So, but for us, we absolutely had to do that. So yeah, a lot of that has uh, been utilized. Uva was behind a bit of it, as well as a number of other team members to put it all together. Glyphs, space emojis, you could basically call them that, that's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one last question is just coming from Excelsior uh, over on YouTube. Uh, will difficulty settings include AI changes like aggression or evasiveness? So at one point we wanted to do that quite heavily. And over time it was looking like, oh, this is gonna be way more complicated than uh, maybe it probably should be from a technical standpoint, right? So I'm not talking like more complicated as like, oh, it's it's a, it's gonna be hard to do, so we don't wanna do it. No, not not at all. <laughs> Um, more on the lines of how would this fit into the game space from altering the difficulty systems and is this going to be something valuable worth our time at this point in development uh, in this process of still cataloging and covering so many other priority needs and as such um, yeah doing an AI based uh, difference on your various difficulties is a bit of a burden unfortunately now, uh, I say that, and I think that there was a little bit of that addressed already in our system, um, in the sense of, especially like aiming quality. Yes, aiming quality is quite a bit different between very hard and very easy. So that part of the AI system is different. If you're on very easy, your opponents are gonna miss you uh, a bit more. Their, their tracking's gonna be a little bit harder. So until they're up in your face, they're probably not gonna hit you very much. Uh, but when you are playing on very hard, uh, that's th they're going to be a bit more accurate. Going to be a bit more accurate, in addition to just dealing out more damage too. So, I think we're going to swap this around. Next question, please. Uh, that's it for the time oh, being. Perfect. You can fly on pilot. Excellent. I'm going to maybe foolishly swap out my pulse laser uh, for this Umbra. <laughs> um, I'd really like a Penumbra. But we're gonna we're gonna do this for now, and I think uh, I think the railgun will satisfy my needs for draining shields from afar. Then Umbra, when I get up close, I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see how it all turns out. So let's continue the story here for a little bit longer. Then we're gonna jump over to our community segment and show some really sweet screenshots we got over the course of the last week. Some good ones. really want weapon output but okay we're in it we're in an interceptor so this should be fine is that three that was three yay uh, let's get a little more utility
medics. The Okar are on their way. He is not responding. Let's just hope he's ignoring me and the Okar haven't gotten to him yet. Yeah, just as I'm cruising over here, there's one more question that I do want to answer um, from John Cross. Um, as a console backer, will I need to, one, the current gen consoles, i.e. PS5 and Xbox Series S and X? Yes. So if you are a console backer, we are only able to do Gen 5 consoles. We also, uh, Gen 5, Gen 9 consoles. So if you have a Gen 8 console and that's what your expectation was when you started the Kickstarter, we are offering refunds and transfers uh, for those of you in that territory. So yeah. All right, here we go. Oh, I see him requesting from a, a stream from PAX East. Everyone's like, oh yeah, I agree with this. Stream from PAX East would be great. That would be amazing if we had a technical team to get that all set up and score it away for us. That would be absolutely nuts. But uh, as it stands, we do not. That would probably be a rather expensive uh, direction to go just for maintaining a stream, but we will be taking some photos and probably some videos. Oh, sorry. We'll be taking some photos and some videos of our, you know, experiences there. And maybe we'll have like a little reel of, of what we've done, but I would not expect anything crazy from PAX East. Um, at, at worst, we'll have some pictures on the Discord to share, right? Uh, but yeah, we're just excited to get back out there to conventions, meet some of you fine folks, let you play a much more refined version of Everspace 2 like two weeks out of its full release it's going to be at that point Whew. man and then uh yeah and to all settlement occupants we are conducting a routine raid do not hinder our access to storage facilities and vessels scrap the okar are already here i need to get to maddox's hangar and transfer the software before they can scan him you have no authority to barge in on us like this we are a peaceful settlement and have complied with all the regulations. We are the authority here. Those who impede our investigations will be dealt with severely. But yeah, um, streaming at conventions in, in general, guys, is uh, it's quite expensive because then you're getting into like internet territory to do all of that stuff. Anyway, all right, continuing story. You made it back. If the Okar figure out what kind of ship I got here, I'm toast. Did you get the encryptor? Yeah, transferring it as we speak. Great. Now the Okar will probably register a change to the roster once I upload this to my systems. Try to keep them off my back long enough so I can get the whole shebang running. I'm not so sure about taking on the Okar. They'll be here any minute. Come on, kid. We're in this together now. Once I'm out, I'll meet you back at Rodia Station as soon as I can make it. Well, all right. Let's do this thing. All right, beautiful. Here we go. This part gets gets nuts. We have detected a register change in one of your vessels. Engage units for intercept. Check again. None of my people would. Oh, scrap Maddox, you idiot! We should have never taken you in. Okay, Adam. The encryptor just started overriding my systems. Shouldn't be long before I can launch. Here comes the lizard parade. Okay. That wasn't terrible. Ah, no, don't shoot him. Actually, you know what? You can just die from corrosion. Your shield's too much, I don't want to deal with it. Ah! I am really glad we equipped this weapon. Stop shooting medics! So many of them. I'm almost ready to jump. Just a little longer. Don't let me down, Maddox. Stop it!
All right. Below me. You're not good, kid. See you at base. What the? Damn, it's that colonial cruiser again. The sheer level of trouble you are in is without precedent. Scrap, I'm screwed. We meet again, Mr. Roslin. Um... Oh, what? We haven't? I can never tell anymore. So many crossed paths. Anyway, I am well acquainted with you in the Roslin line. My ship... ...is in the docking bay, returned by the Okar authorities who handed it over to me along with your good self. It was you who raided the Bloodstar base. Yes, looking for you. I've had quite a difficult time finding you. You need me for something, or I'd be dead already. Acutely observed, Mr. Roslin. After all, you shouldn't exist. Part of my remit was to erase every trace of the Roslin cloning facilities in the DMZ. Hundreds of loose cannons like you roaming the region and causing problems. Something had to be done about it. I can't help what I am. Don't expect pity from me. It's lucky for you that more serious matters are afoot. Pull up case file G72-844. Do you know who this is? Uh, yeah, Oscar Blakemore. He's the GMB director for all the DMZ operations. Good. And this? I only heard about it, haven't been there. Vesna mining colony in the Zarkov system. GMB regional headquarters. Good. So you seem to have some idea of the astropolitical situation in the DMZ. Look, what's this about? This is about you, Mr. Roslin. That isn't me. No, but that is Adam Roslin, Blakemore's right hand. You want me to be him. Exactly. I need you to infiltrate the mining colony as the other Adam Roslin and gather some information for me. And in return? I let your base stand. I let you live. I guess that's good enough incentive. I think I might have encountered him. When? Not long ago. The jump gate at Union Bridge. Well, it must have been him, since you are the only two Roslin clones remaining. Only two? That's right. The cloning stations have been offline for some time now, and many clones were identified and intercepted attempting to reach the homeworlds. We couldn't have that, could we? And now there is just the other Adam Roslin, who is an agent for GNB. And you, who I can't really figure out yet. You are already in a difficult position. It is time to be clear about your allegiances. You can rehabilitate yourself with the fleet and we can leave you in peace. Or, I can put you, and your companions, on a high-priority eliminate list. Which will it be? I would take the common sense approach. Good. I have someone on the inside at the mining colony. She'll walk you through. So, we have an understanding. Yeah. Woo! <coughs> <coughs> I am pleased that our little discussion has proven to be a constructive one. Using the main jump gate to the Zarkov system where Vesta Mining Colony is located will not be an option, as you will be immediately registered. There's a smuggler's route I've heard of. I know someone who can get me through. Of course you do. Our agent will send you instructions once you are through to the system. 
My technicians have uploaded further instructions to your hive unit. You will require some extra coaching in order to convincingly portray the other Roslin. In the meantime, you and I will need to maintain radio silence until the task is finished. If you are discovered, I will deny any knowledge of your existence. And as a fugitive Roslin clone, I will be obligated to hunt you down. I have no intention of getting caught. Having a colonial cruiser this close to your home base may cause irritation for your companions. You're right. I better check on them. Alrighty. By the way, there's spoilers in these videos. These game dev live streams. Just a couple. It's a li little bit. Adam, what the heck is going on? Why is there a great big colonial cruiser at our door? They were my ride home. I realize this looks bad, but maybe we can play things to our advantage. First things first, has Maddox shown up? You were expecting more company? I was hoping, but maybe it was too much to expect a mercenary like Maddox to follow through. Circumstances have changed. I'm in a real bind now. I need to do a top secret job for the fleet. If I pull this off, we'll be given some kind of reprieve from the colonial authorities. But I don't know to what extent that means, or if I can trust this commissioner. God damn it, Adam. What have you gotten us into? Hey, Alec. Back when I was delivering the Red Plasma Gin, you mentioned that there was a smuggler's route open to Zarkov? Where's it located? No idea, but I'm sure Tarjak, that Okar bootlegger, would know if anyone did. Okay, I'm heading to Cartwright's Wake to catch up with him. You might not hear from me for a while. If Maddox shows up, tell him to sit tight. We'll hold the fort. Let us know when you need bailing out. Excellent. The Vortex! We're finally getting into Zarkov territories! Oh, I'm excited. Very much looking forward to that. I'm also watching the chat and everybody kind of talking about all the different things, especially like computer prices and oh gosh it, it it hurts my brain i'm i'm so sorry also people saying great big that's just a light cruiser well yeah i mean light cruisers are still kind of terrifying I and mean, you look at star wars and uh, amir architens is still not exactly something you want to go up against even if it's not something like a victory class star destroyer and don't even get me started with the imperial class uh so yeah i mean it it you got your variety and they're, they're definitely more threatening to fighters light cruisers are uh, because they are the support cruisers in general Navy and space uh, sci-fi. All right. So uh, as a fighter craft, definitely more concerned about a light cruiser uh, in that particular uh, field in a nutshell. All right. Anyway, enough about that stuff. Who cares? Ah, let's uh, look over what content we have. Briefly, I want to get on over to Zarka. Actually, yeah, let's just go. Let's just go. Let's just go. There's nothing. We don't need nothing. Actually, we could use some consumables, but we don't need nothing. It's fine. We really need to update our equipment. It's fine. Hey, Hive. Those fleet techs been tinkering with you? Are you still yourself? Inasmuch as I have still not been updated to the Eterna network and have been grossly insulted by being treated as illegitimate machinery, I am the same Hive as before. Hold, hold on a second. I look over and I see Eric can't handle tech talk. He's a fake nerd. Excuse me? I need a, a geek bite. I need you to kick that guy right out of the chat, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, no, nah, I mean, everybody knows different things, right? Nobody's a master at everything. So yeah, I mean, I will fully admit, I know just enough about computers to be dangerous. All right, I have built my own computer before, not the one that I'm currently using. I did, of course, have help because I probably would have destroyed it if I tried to do it myself. But I just, I'm, I gotta defend myself a little bit there, all right? Stop with that smack talk, frog. Due to you, I have been supplemented with a coaching <laughs> protocol based upon the personality profile of your target subject, Adam Roslin, commander of the GNB elite squad in the DMZ. Perfect. Also, I want to just clarify and just acknowledge this beautiful statement from T3Cube over on Twitch. He says, Eric is a master of forgetting about ship abilities. So get wrecked. Take that. I am to aid you in becoming like him. Wait. And to intervene Dude. during moments when you are not playing the part properly. I mean, you're not wrong. So my on 
onboard AI is now here to show me how to act more like me. Crazy. Trying to use the warp gate? That's not how to do it. You silly buffoon. Should have got a hive unit. There we go. All right, here we are. Let's go. I did use the ult earlier. I was waiting for the um, the Okar Corvette to get close enough. I didn't want to use it before. And uh, I used it at just the right time because I actually almost got wrecked. I don't know if you guys were watching my consumable usage and my health. Hey, but, uh, Hive, I need to ask you something. I am your captive audience. I've been having these weird dreams, these visions. Oh, 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 Adam, connecting Ad with something, Ad Adam, I Adam. Oops. Where'd it go? Why didn't he finish that? I don't know what happened. Let's keep going. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nothing here there? No, 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 no. This is a strange blip in the audio waves. Nothing to worry about, everything's fine. Oh my gosh, why are you guys savaging me over on YouTube? What in the world? Let's see if I answer any of your questions again. Oh, scary missiles. Seriously though, what in the DMZ are we gonna do next Friday? Well, you're clearly gonna show up to PAX East and hang out with us, that's, that's what you're doing. Of course, that is what you are doing. Coming over to Pax East. Be there, be square. Here we are. That freighter sure looks familiar. Excellent. I'm looking for Tarjack. Seen him around? As I live and breathe, Adam. Terrain, wow. So that's your freighter outside. Thought I knew it from somewhere. It has been a long time. I had wondered what had become of you. Can I just say how pleasant it is that we used the same ship model, granted it's updated, from Everspace 1. So if you've played Everspace 1, including the DLC, and you are playing through Everspace 2 and you see that freighter, both Adam says this line, doesn't it look familiar? But then also your very eyes are like, hey, that does actually look familiar. There's a direct correlation there. Feels good. Feels good. Very pleased with the results of this. You used to visit my shop quite frequently, even twice at one time, which I thought was unusual. And then your visits tapered off until eventually nothing. So... You have survived the never-ending turmoil that is the DMZ. That I have, Terrain, just barely. I tried to play it straight for a while and got a proper job, but that didn't quite work out. He never does for the like of you and me, Adam. We outcasts are best following our own paths. Amen to that. You still in the trading business? Indeed. And I have moved up to bigger clients now. Large order fulfillment. The cargo might be questionable, but the reward is sufficient, and I see no harm in it. Good for you. You said you were seeking Tarjak. He passed through some time ago, but is presently engaged with a task. I don't suppose you would know a way into the Zarkov system without getting noticed. I've heard from our old mutual friend Elek that some of you traders ply a route through there. That is true. And since you are such a valued and trusted old customer, and friend, <laughs> I would oblige you with access to a secret back door. It is quite near our current whereabouts. I will provide you with the precise location and instructions on how to activate the gate. You're a star, Tareen. It's good to see you again. Let's catch up properly soon. Now that we have found one another again, that can be a distinct possibility. I will be in Zarkov soon on the run. Okay. Well, let's keep an eye out for each other then. 
Excellent. I also see some praise uh, coming over from Pokem Spark over on YouTube saying kudos to the writing team. Been enjoying the dialogue so far in the early access. Well, thank you so much. That means a lot. We have absolutely put a lot of our effort into the writing for Everspace 2. We have, oh my gosh, it's it's insane how many lines of text are in this iteration. It's four times that dialogue, four times that of Everspace 1. Whew. That is quite an impressive difference in the number of audio lines that we have to record and translations we have to take care of. It's It's been a wild ride, but we are incredibly happy with the results of it and um, the individuals who have been assisting us on that matter, both internally and also externally. It's been remarkable to see it coming together. So thank you. Thank you very much. Close to 10K lines in Everspace 2, and there's a... Uh, and that's uh, AAA territory is what uh, Michael, the CEO of Rockfish, Rockfish Games says. So uh, wild, absolutely wild. All right, let's get to this hidden jump gate. Get over into Zarkov. Terrain again. It's a small universe. Such re-encounters are not so improbable, considering the degree of social engagement you undertake within the confines of the DMZ. You just gotta take the mystery out of everything, don't you? Only I was using a scout right now. That's still effective though. Right, let's just one more pot shot. Boom! No more shields. Beautiful. Thank you for your donation into my loot box. Alrighty. So yeah, once we get over to Zarkov, we will go into our little community segment. Where we like to highlight the screenshots and fan art and all that type of stuff. I haven't seen any fan art recently, so it's just going to be screenshots today. But uh, yeah, we'll also give you some more information on uh, Paxi. Sketchy looking gate is stable. Don't want to come out the other side scrambled. Here we go. I am receiving an encrypted message addressed to your signature. That must be Hawk's agent. Put him through. You made it in. First things first, I'm your contact for this mission. You can call me Tammy. Roslyn is out of the system. If he jumps back in, we'll know right away and we'll have to abort. Before venturing further into the system, you need to pick up a data package with the required signature. You'll find it inside the gas vortex, which is frequented by scavengers. Do your best not to be seen. Communicate over. Well, that was rather blunt. Could even get a hi or how are you? Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, it happens. Contacts these days, Murray. Snipe the sniper. There we go. Stop it. There we go. Oh, yes! Level 14! Oh, I really needed that, honestly. This makes me much happier. Oh, my gosh. Let's see, what did we find here? Some powerful homing missiles? Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I think we're gonna... I mean, they got the cannot be damaged, but, you know... Let's replace the corrosion mines. We haven't really been using those. Uh, but uh, otherwise, yeah, I mean, we, we gotta get this stuff updated. Oh my goodness. We'll, we'll definitely have to start doing that the next time we play. We gotta go into Superlight one time because gosh dang it, I love Zarkov's Superlight music. I've missed it. Here we go. Here we go. It just gets better too. Oh, just. Gero, you're my hero.
Sounded like it was repeating, yeah? Just wait. I love this so much. Okay, alright. Now we're... Now it's repeating. Gosh! Oh! I love that. I love that so much. So good. So good. So good. Okay. All right. So this is going to be our stopping point right here. Done. We have entered the location. It's saved, I think. Yeah, it says game saved up right. I'm gonna just say that it did and it works completely fine, even though technically still early access. Uh, but what could possibly go wrong? So we are gonna go ahead and head on over to the news section with this one very brief interlude to tell you about our social channels. Yes, we did have an hour time change because lo and behold, I am the American on the Rockfish Games all German team. Uh, and so we are operating the streams on American time because it has to be around my children's schedules. Sorry about that inconvenience for these two weeks, uh, but that will get cycled back around to not miss any notifications. You can, of course, join us over on YouTube and Twitter and Twitch and Discord is probably your best bet. We do a lot of notifications over on Discord. Basically anything that's handed out anywhere else I will uh, get it posted in the Discord, and if I don't, it's because somebody didn't tell me that it went live, and then I get upset, and I post it in the Discord anyway. It's awesome good time. That is the best way, truly, to stay informed so you never miss a beat. Mm, so good. You know what else is so good? Let's check out some of these really stinking awesome screenshots, because man, you guys, truly, we didn't have a lot of screenshots submitted over the course of the last week, but they packed pack a punch. And so I actually included uh, most of the submissions, more than I would normally do, but it's uh, that's just how we are gonna go down. Uh, yeah, Michael, said, he's also adding a little clarity <laughs> there since I said that I was the only American. So yeah, okay, let's, let's give uh, credit where credit is due. We also have a Canadian, we also have a Brit, absolutely. Uh, and soon a French uh, living in Tokyo. Whew, excellent. That's right. Very, very good, very good. So thank you for that added clarity, Michael. Definitely appreciate it. We are diversifying the team ever so slightly, ever so subtly in beautiful ways. Man, the talent across the world. And the talent in the community. This one comes from Sky, probably not the, um, the Paw Patrol member, probably somebody else. Uh, they're probably gonna hate me for saying that now. I'm not sure. I have five children, so sorry about the reference. Anyway. Uh, Sky did a fantastic job with this shot, uh, capturing the Drake system. This is a coalition base. This is the one that's, uh, it's, goodness gravy, I, I can't remember its name, but I think this does such a fantastic job of just capturing the atmosphere out here, which is so desolate and alone based on all the gang wars that had transpired, while the coalition has only just recently been transforming into a mercantile operation. And uh, yeah, it's a great shot. I love the widescreen. Anytime there's a widescreen shot posted, it's almost always a winner for me. So good job. Excellent, excellent. Keep them coming. I, I just dig it so much. Next up, we've got The Way to the Halo. They submitted several shots. Um, and you know, they had a lot of really fun ones, really playful shots. So I'm gonna highlight several of those here. And Geekbyte, I know that we do have some questions. I'm not avoiding you. I just wanna get through a couple of these first. And then we're gonna answer questions while we're showing these uh, images to everybody. Um, the Way of the Halo uh, was kind of doing like this mining sort of theme and it maybe have, was based off of one of our previous community challenges, which were mining themed. And I think they did capture some clever shots here. So I'm gonna kind of go through several of them that they have as we answer some more questions. So all the ones that I'm cycling between are from the way to the halo. So, hey, question. Right. Uh, Casper O on YouTube uh, is asking, are there plans for more late game activities? Currently the ancient rifts are the best source for almost everything. Money, star forged items, and it also drops legendary items. 
Yeah, so internal testing has shown some pretty interesting results in what is the best to farm. Um, but I think in general right now, rifts are probably that field, especially if you can hit them in the higher lunacy levels. That being said, there's still some goods to be had out of high risk areas. Uh, granted that they do take a little bit more time we've seen. And that's something that we may or may not adjust whenever we sort of go into that sort of refinement of high risk areas specifically. And we've also found that jobs are rather pleasant to just pick up and do as well. It kind of fills the space with a little bit more to do as well as you're accruing more uh, renown to get to that top legendary status, which does open up some nice little features of having those decals. So uh, it's, it's quite beneficial to have as well. Um, but yeah, uh, overall, there have been improvements, adjustments, and additions to the rifts, which we will, I don't know if we'll highlight actually in the streams or not. It might be something that you will just experience when 1.0 comes out, but also based on internal testing, the rifts are a bit more fun. We added, we added some more funness there and also a little bit more challenge in the, in the process as well. So yeah, but all these shots, these four shots that I cycled between, um, all of those were from the way to the halo. And I think that they captured some pleasant shots. It was nice. So the next one I have is actually from Geek Bite, but I feel like I've seen this shot before. Was this a previous shot you submitted, Geek Bite? Is that? Um, no, this is fairly recent, this one. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, it's, it's, I love it. I love the, the way that the engines are just screaming at you. And I love the way it's just going, veering off into the Cedo sunset. So uh, definitely kudos from me. Also do have a question. I do. Uh, Excellent. Axapic, hell of a name to pronounce that one on YouTube, would like to know, uh, will it be possible to change the color of the jump engines when flying between planets or the super light engine? Super light engines will not change. We are, it's, it's, um, there were some, I mean, at the end of the day, there were a lot of elements that we could adjust and tweak about how super light would come across, but it's it would be a bit of a process, but more of a process than we would like it to be. And we want to hit the priority elements of 1.0, especially um, as opposed to getting maybe a little too detailed in customization territory, since customization as a whole is a nice to have. In fact, at some, certain points, we weren't entirely sure if we were going to have the ability to customize the cockpit color or the engine trails. We just weren't sure about it. So we're happy that those got in. Um, I know it's always like you get one thing, you want more, 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 right? It's like my engine colors look great, but not in super light. Well, super light, you know, it's activating a different type of engine there. So from a lore standpoint, it's gonna shine a different color some way for sci-fi reasons probably. Um, and that's what we're sticking to as of right now. So thank you for the question. Uh, I know that you probably don't like that answer, but that's not, uh, yeah, we're not gonna make color changes to the engine in super light. Uh, not planned, not for 1.1. Excellent. So this next shot also comes from Geek Bite, and it, it created a little bit of controversy, I think, over in the Discord, because uh, a lot of people were like, wow, oh my gosh, that's a gorgeous shot from Drake. Uh, no, no, it, no, it's not. This is not, this is not from Drake. This is actually from Everspace One. Um, Everspace One shot here. And then people were like, man, I think that the planets look better in Everspace One than they do Everspace Two. Whoa, whoa, really? Mm, all right. And uh, yeah, okay. So there's a discrepancy there. I think some of you guys, I mean, it, it's certainly pleasant to look at. That is, there's no doubts about that. We are happy with how Everspace 1 came across, but we're also happy with Everspace 2. Come on now. Come on now, folks. Come on now. But uh, it is a great shot. It's a it's a very nice shot, uh, Geek Bite. Were you doing another Everspace 1 run? Were you going back through it or? Uh, no, I was just digging through my terabytes upon terabytes of uh, <laughs> images from Everspace One, and I thought that looks cool. Great. Well, thank you for submitting that. Do we have another question? Uh, yes. Um, probably one that we can't actually answer. However, ask, but ask it anyway. On YouTube, wants to know how is the visual polish pass coming along? Any sneak previews? Um, I can't provide any sneak previews right now because I'm in screenshot mode for you guys, uh, but there have been bouncing, bouncing uh, and polishing passes for certain uh, lights and certain asset packaging um, to make it stand out a bit more. In fact, we have a bit of internal testing where some folks were like catching uh, adjustments. They were like, wow, this looks 
cleaner, did you guys change this? Yes, we did actually. And, and so there's been a, a number of adjustments on that front in a lot of the different handcrafted locations, the well over a hundred handcrafted locations that we've designed in Everspace 2, we are crazy. Holy cow. I think uh, just for reference, um, and Michael, you can of course correct me if I'm wrong here. For reference, I think the intended number of handcrafted locations at the start of development was somewhere around 80 to 90 locations. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we're sitting somewhere around 120 or 130. <laughs> Woo, that does not include all of the random locations that you can encounter with unknown signals and stuff like that. They do use uh, procedural generation of assets that were handcrafted though. So there is that. It's, um, it's nuts. It's absolutely nuts. So, um, yeah, so, so good question. Uh, here's a different response. I uh, <laughs> hope you enjoyed it though. So good, good stuff. So these next slew of screenshots come from Sonozaki and Sonozaki also was the provider of our uh, YouTube thumbnail on YouTube. Um, that was incredibly redundant, but uh, shout out to them already. And this is their first shot just flying over the destruction of the um, <coughs> uh, Charybdis Bowl where all the junk is basically tossed down in the plant and they try to recycle it into something new, probably, I guess. So nice shot here. We're gonna transition over through a couple of Sonozaki's shots that are equally as visually pleasing as we answer another question. Uh, right, we have uh, an interesting one for Steeg over on Twitch. Uh, how much have you evolved the puzzle aspect of the game? Oh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Um, we, we started off, and I imagine you guys probably uh, recognize this, even in early access especially, like the puzzles starting off, we wanted them to be a bit more basic so that you could comprehend what was the objective, right? And then later parts in the games, like we want you to have to think about it. That's the point of puzzles. If a puzzle is like, you know, there's three blocks in front of you and you have to get this to the block at the top. Oh no, how am I gonna do it? That's not fun. That's not engaging. That's a time waster. We do not want to put time wasters in the game. We want to have things that you can engage with and be pleased by when you figure it out, when you put all the puzzle pieces together. And uh, especially in uh, Kite Nebula, we felt really good about those puzzles coming together and further still, you know, we get to um, Drake. We wanted to keep refining that process. And, and yeah, there was a bit of a transformation towards those puzzle elements uh, from the beginning of Early Access, especially to where we're at now because we just, we had to make them better and better and we had to make sure they're engaging. So yeah, there, I know that there are some of you guys out there who uh, don't like puzzles. We get it. We totally understand. You don't want to have to think, you just want to loot and shoot. That's totally acceptable. I get it. I sincerely understand. But our core design philosophy here is that if we're making handcrafted locations, we also want there to be, you know, reasons why we've designed these levels in the way that we have. We want there to be points of interest and we want there to be rewards for you exploring and extracting various details from these worlds we've created. So yeah, good, good stuff. Lots of, lots of development on the puzzle side. I mean, shoot, I'll even say this. We do still have a lot of other puzzles, uh, puzzle ideas that we uh, sort of prototyped that you've never seen before that we're kind of sort of working. And, and it, you know, maybe in the future you might end up seeing some of those and maybe the DLC or, you know, what have you. Uh, but yeah, we, we definitely have a, quite a bit more up our sleeve on that front to make things nice and fresh. So uh, we'll see what happens. Probably not by 1.0 but uh, maybe we'll see what the future has in store for us. This shot also comes from Sonozaki, by the way, just a great shot of the, um, one of the ramen joints over at Prescott Starbase. And last but not least, uh, we have this one. I, I love these just open space shots uh, where you're just getting this huge feeling of scope. And this one just does it so beautifully. Over in Zarkov, it's the, the I guess it's a gas, is it a gas giant? Shoot, I can't remember now um, the specific location, but uh, just I love the way that this is captured. The, the colors being so softened make it just gentle, so pleasing to me. Quite like it. And I also dig the color combination there, that ship. It's a nice, it's a nice ship, Sonozaki. So very good, very good. Very, very good stuff. 
All right, so we're gonna transition over into Excel's shots. We've got a couple from him um, and uh, we're gonna cycle through those as we answer yet another question as well. So thank you, Excel, for these uh, beautiful screenshots. Uh, and uh, yeah, Geek Bike, question. Right, T3Cube on Twitch is asking, will you guys consider playable credits like Race the Sun? Having unskippable stuff scroll for 15 minutes like most games is kind of boring. Repeat the question one more time. I'll make sure I, I, I've captured the <clears throat> soul of this. Will you guys consider playable credits like Race the Sun? I'm believing that is a, a reference to a specific uh, game. Race the uh, Sun. Yeah, and having unskippable stuff scroll for 15 minutes is kind of kind of boring. Um, T3 Q, if you can the... give us a bit more clarity on that, that'd be cool. I'm, unfortunately, I'm not familiar with the game Race the Sun. Um, could you give me another reference point? Because I'm not 100% I'm sure I understand the question. Okay, apparently it's a fun little game right. uh, with interactive credits kind of thing maybe do something while the credits are oh okay oh okay oh okay okay so it's just a credits sequence you want to be able to engage with the game during the credits okay um no there's no plans uh <laughs> it's a it's a curious question i like that i think that's playful i think it's fun um but no there, there's no plans to do that that would definitely be in the nice to have territory and i i don't even know if there's a single team member who is like oh this would be fun um we might have some I believe the proper terminology is, um, no, it's actually, that's not the right word. Uh, we might have like layered backgrounds to where when it's going down and you move your mouse around, you might see like asteroids move or planets move and stuff like that. Um, but that might just be the, the bulk of it. And of course we'll have a speed up mechanic. So if you want to get to a particular segment because you know your name's a backer and you want to see that and how we've uh, highlighted it. Yeah, I mean, there'll definitely be tools like that as well. But uh, yeah. So yeah, there's there's no plans to, to to do that, but yeah, it would be fun. But I also am not a hundred percent sure how we'd incorporate that. Almost like you you have this railgun mini game where drones occasionally pop up and they try to shoot the various names scrolling through the credits, and you have to <laughs> save them. Oh, that's that's ridiculous. That's not even. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can see people getting upset with that and be like, I was a backer of this game and. It, drone shot my name out of the credit sequence oh, anyway, whatever. Anyway. all right thank you for these shots again though uh, excel and thank you for that question t3 cube it's an interesting one but no it's not in the plans not in the plans all right uh last shot we have for today is the chemical bro high con contrast per usual uh just a nice clean representation of the kite research facility the uh, brie bio plant it's uh it's a solid one Works really well. What other questions do we have, Geek Bite? And then we're going to wrap up the stream. How many questions do we have, by the way? I've just got the one more okay, uh, awesome. currently, um, but it's one that we've had before. But I think with, with a lot of new players coming on board, etc., uh, yeah. it might be good to just answer it. Pokemon Spark on YouTube. Uh, is there any chance of a new game plus? I know it's been one that's been asked for yeah. a bunch of times. Yeah, this is this is something that we have been observing. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that this is like a hot request from the community. I know some of you who won it, you're like, yes, it is. We've been screaming it, blah, blah, blah. Now listen, listen, okay? Quick timeout sees, all right? We hear you. Let me say that. We hear you. A hundred percent, we hear you. We are not denying you because we're ignoring you because we don't love you, because we don't care. No, 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 no. Okay, whoa, slow down, okay? Let's take one step back, all right? Sincerely, we don't want to approach a new game plus because of the technical issues it would create. If we were to go in that direction, we would easily need another six months development. And with the, with the full release three weeks out, you could probably see why we're not so interested in going that particular Route. And when I say at least, I'm talking at least, okay? All of the story components that we have worked into the current state of Everspace 2 were designed around specific levels. They were designed around specific elements of progression. To just scoop that all up and hit level 30 and say, oh yeah, you can replay it all and blah, blah, blah. It, it doesn't, that does not translate. It does not work like that. And unfortunately, what it would require is an entirely new balancing pass of the whole game. That is not a small ask. So again, 
we hear you. We sincerely do. Is it a great idea? It might be. It might be. But we're not doing it. It's not in the plans. We've never said we were going to go in that direction. It's not going to happen. Okay? Just got to be clear in that expectation. I know that for some of you, that really sucks. It's just not, it's not in the plans. Okay? Super clear about that one. So now on that downer, um, <laughs> goodness. Um, <clears throat> uh, the good news is that, uh, of course, we will be at PAX East next week. Oh my gosh, man! I feel like I feel like the air is kind of dusky right now. Whew, sorry about that, everybody. But just it's the direction that we are moving in. Um, we have uh, GDC and we have PAX East next week. And PAX East, we will be on the floor. So GDC, not so much on the floor, but there will be communications possibly. Um, and at PAX East, we will have a floor space. You'll be able to go there, engage with us, play the version that effectively I just showed you today with all of the updated bells and whistles, full voice recording for both English and German, as well as basically every single freaking tweak and adjustment that we've made uh, since the fall uh, update itself. And that number is in the hundreds of how much we have shaped, changed, touched, modified, adjusted, fixed, balanced. It, it, it really is crazy. So if you are interested in coming out to experience that Everspace 2 glory, and as well as meeting myself, Geekbyte, as well as 31 Fox, who is over in the chat on Twitch, we will all be sitting in, at that booth with our glorious faces hidden behind masks, uh, because that's uh, that's the process that they require, but we'll gladly give you hugs and handshakes and allow you to play our fine Everspace 2 experience. Aside from that, uh, so I don't know, Ge Geekbyte, am I missing anything? Is there any other details? Uh... Just, thank you for sharing that link, by the way. That's, that's Chef's Kiss. Look at that. Look at this guy. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Um, no, I think the other thing we were going to mention was regarding uh, the Discord and keeping your account safe because we've had a lot of uh, potential scams coming through with regards to direct messages, etc. Yes, that's a that's a very good point. And Geekbyte, did you want to talk on that a little bit further? Or do you want me to? Doesn't matter. Uh, you, you can carry on. Yeah, okay. you do. Okay, yeah, so effectively, guys, I mean, most of you have used Discord for some time. For those of you who are maybe a little bit newer to it, um, it is very common around the release schedule of games for their discords to be hit by a lot of people who don't have best intentions. So there are a number of ways that you can protect yourself through authentication, as well as through binding your account through email, which we do have our discord now where you can only join it if you are bound to an email. It's the only way, yet scammers still seep in and it might even be because they've jacked somebody else's account. So anytime you get a friend request completely out of the blue from somebody you've never heard of, let us know and we'll track it. You don't have to respond unless you want to mess with them a little bit, in which case we don't ne necessarily encourage you messing with them because they might not be a scammer. You never know. It's, it's hard to say. But I can assure you that if they've somehow reported you to Steam and your account's going to be deactivated unless you give them information, that's not how it works at all. So don't buy it. The second they're like, is this your Steam account? And the, nope, it's it's done. Just let us know. We'll clean up the Discord accordingly. We got you covered. All right, no big deal. So thank you for bringing up that point, Geek Bite. Really do appreciate it. Um, You're welcome. Yeah, aside from all of that, that's that's the stream, guys. That's everything. That's it. We ran a little bit over, but uh, wonderful screenshots. I'm glad that we were able to show a bit more of the story, more voice lines, I think, too, instead of text-to-speech. So that was pleasant. Um, and answer a slew of fantastic questions. You guys are sincerely awesome. So uh, yeah, definitely hope that you can join us for PAX East. Um, I'm gonna show you this uh, this fun little trailer one more time, and then we'll no probably have some- next week, by the way. <laughs> oh yeah, oh gosh, that's the last important thing. Thank you, oh my gosh. <laughs> because we'll be at PAX East, there will not be a stream over on YouTube or Twitch. There will not be one. So we're gonna skip. The next stream will be one week out of full release. Oh my gosh. So I hope that you can join us for that in two weeks from now. No stream next week. All right. Woo. I'm going to say all my stuff right here. You guys have been awesome. I have been Eric Schrader, your community ambassador for Rockfish Games. Don't stop being awesome. We'll see you at PAX Eats next week, or we'll see you on the stream Yay. in two. Toodles. Dex, that body we just found. 
When I saw it, it felt like that was still me in there. Your DNA scan showed that you're a military clone pilot. No wonder you bettered my predecessor. What if I broadcast your profile? You may not like who will come looking for me. Hundreds of loose cannons like you roaming the region and causing problems. Something had to be done about it. There's something of great value in the DMZ. One big easy job. You be my ticket out of here. And yours too. Your authority, your treaties, your lies, and your filthy presence have no place here. They call themselves Okar Prime. Any opportunity to trigger a new war would suit their purposes perfectly. It is time to be clear about your allegiances. We can leave you in peace, or I can put you and your companions on a high priority eliminate list. Which will it be? You don't understand what's at stake. So, are you in? I'm still trying to figure you out, Adam. It's clear you're running from something. I can't help what I am. All I cared about to start with was getting out of the DMZ. There's no going back now. Things are looking up, Hive. I think I see light at the end of the tunnel. So soon. Hello there. I know that you guys have been wanting me to do something for a while and my throat hasn't been feeling so hot. It is better. And I'm willing to look silly for your entertainment. Whew. <clears throat> I need some more water first. <clears throat> Thank you for being a part of this community. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for coming to the Rockfish Stream post-show shenanigans segment. If you enjoyed what you liked, please leave a thumbs up. And don't forget to comment on YouTube, sharing your favorite moment of the stream. That's always appreciated. Also, last bit. You guys do know that the price increase did, of also, course, happen. Last bit. Oh, you guys do know that the price increase... Woo, woo, woo. Sorry about that. Isn't that fun whenever you get reverberation? Ah, but what I was saying is that uh, there is a, the price increase did of course happen already for Everspace 2. You can still wishlist it 
and wait for sales. Generally, there's like uh, there's like little sales that go on every now and then on Steam. In fact, there's one right the heck now, uh, but we are not in it. So you're not saving anything if you're buying right now. You can always wish list, wait for a sale. Otherwise, and of course, April 6th, full release date. Full release happening 20 days from now. Mark it on your calendar. We will be starting an event in the Discord to mark that date specifically. As soon as Michael allows me to post the exact time of day that that is going to occur. So uh, no pressure on you, Michael. Uh, but yeah, we want to make sure nobody misses a beat on that front. And uh, it'll be good times. All right. Don't stop being awesome. Like I've said already. And have a great weekend. And truly, I do hope I get to meet you over at PAX East. That would be, that would be pretty stinking cool. All right. See you later, guys. Wait a second, wait a second. No, 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 we, we, uh... No, okay, everything, everything's fine. Everything's good. Okay, nope, everything checks out. Cool. Great weekend. Do it. <laughs>